Okay. Okay, so we're now going to go through the recorder reports for the entomology, ecology and entomology section of London Natural History Society for the 2021 uh, section AGM. Uh, we're going to start with Tony Madrid for Bees and Wasps, and Tony would actually like to say a couple of words. So I've just got a holding slide up for you there, Tony. <laughs> That's great. Thanks a lot, Kieran. <clears throat> yeah, it's been a, an interesting year for bees and wasps. Um, most of you probably realise we had really good spring and terrible weather, and it's had a big impact on the kinds of reports we've had coming in. The one thing that I have noticed is the relative paucity of records coming in from across London. So hint out there, everybody, please put your records in. And it's actually more important now than anything and never before, because I'm now in discussion with both Bee Wars and Giggle and, of course, with the NHS ourselves to start thinking about putting together a bee, London Bee Atlas. So I'm really keen on encouraging people to submit their records from the London area, from the NHS recording area, and preferably as soon as possible, so that by the time we get round to the January meeting of those people interested in recording bees, which we'll announce later, we'll be able to put that in place and get some discussion going on how we're going to, to progress this particular project. That's really all I've got to say, actually, Kieran, unless there's anything else you want me to, to add to that. Um, I'm quite curious, are you aware if we've had a bee atlas in London before? Would this be the first time? No, we haven't had one. Not, no, far from not, not that we know of. <laughs> no, no. I mean, I've been talking to Mike Edwards as well. And he wasn't aware of one. So no, okay. it's, it's, it's exciting. And one thing I am particularly interested in is aggregate nest sites. There's very few records. We know there are a lot of interesting bees, bees around, but we don't necessarily know where it is that they're nesting. So what are the areas we need to protect and look after in order to maintain our really fantastic biodiversity in terms of bees and wasps? Okay, thanks very much. Brilliant, no problem. Right, the next report is just a brief update of general updates about um, what's going on in the fly world uh, from Linda Pryke. Uh, so uh, the marmalade hoverfly apparently is the number four most recorded animal on the LNHS I record um, activity, which I think is fantastic. Uh, she'd like to point out that Diptris Day, hosted by the Diptris Forum, is online on Saturday the 20th of November, and you can book, book via the Diptris Forum website there. If you've got anything fly-related that you'd like to update Lynn about or chat to Lynn about, then her email address is there. It's linda at prike.net. Uh, there's a fantastic new crane flies book from the British Entomological and Natural, Natural History Society. It's written by Alan Stubbs with contributions from a lot of of other dipterists uh, and off the back of that there'll be a number of ID courses uh, coming out in 2022 including some in London actually we were we've just uh, we've just secured through the Field Studies Council uh, a tutor Pete Baldwin for some courses that we're going to do at Bushy Park. Uh, if you're interested in knowing more about the crane fly book there's actually a talk it's free to attend with the British Entomological and Natural History Society tomorrow um, when I get a breathing space you're at the start of Elliot's talk, I'll drop the link in the chat. Um, also this year, for those that are not expert dipterists, the POMS Fit Count app launch. So that's a way of helping us look at pollinators, including, um, including hoverflies and other diptera. So that was everything from Linda. Uh, from Steph Skip, we've got an update on soldier beetles and the allied groups. So 190 records were submitted within the LNHS recording area for 2021. So that is both within the LNHS activity and outside of it, because Steph is the national recorder for that group. Uh, this is the same number of records funnily, as was logged in 2020. Uh, so a consistent recording effort from uh, London Coleopterists. Uh, there's a special thank you there to Wendy Knight, Mark Saunders, Linda Pryke and Gina Brignoli uh, for submitting their records via the LNHS I record activity this year. Uh, the top species recorded in the recording area were uh, are the three listed there, and I'm not going to embarrass myself trying to pronounce these scientific names there, but uh, yeah, the top Top one there is Raganinka Fulva with 71 records. All right. Okay, true bugs, uh, our update from Tristan Bantock. 
So a one species new to Britain was found in the London area during 2021, which we can see a picture of there. It's the North American leafhopper. It's a medium sized green species, about five millimeters in length, uh, with the apical cells of four wing darkened. It's specifically associated with honey locust tree, uh, which you can see in the image there. Uh, it's a spiny tree that develops large seed pods quite widely planted in London and European cities. Um, and it's been found uh, that the uh, North American leafhopper has been found in two small parks in North London on the mature honey locust. So we think it's a likely, likely to be a recent colonist, but it may have been overlooked for a little while. If you've got any records of this, please do submit them through iRecord, preferably through the LNHS app, but either way, Tristan will get them. Okay, right, amphibians and reptiles from Tom Langton. Um, so I'm just going to read it out. Suspicions are that with people spending more time in the garden during lockdowns, are that garden ponds and compost heaps have been better managed and more productive, but the data is lacking. So we'd like to see the records of your slow worms, et cetera. Uh, the trend is for more sightings in winter months. Winter months continues. Um, both groups hold potential for a widespread citizen science project mapping and monitoring climate change related behaviour and life cycle changes. Uh, so we've got a photo there of a juvenile slow worm um, from January on Hounslow Heath by Mick Massey. So I think the call to arms there is if you do have records for amphibians and reptiles that you've been holding on to, please do check the LNHS website and submit them to Tom Langton. I will make sure that anything that's gone in through the LNHSI record activity gets to Tom at the end of the year as well. Um, so there might be some that are waiting to get to Tom there as well. Um, I think Tom's here. If he's got anything to add, if you've got anything to add, Tom, then please feel free to unmute and interrupt me. Okay. Right, so butterflies, Leslie Williams. So uh, we're still, it's still working hard on the London Butterfly Atlas and it's currently being drafted. Uh, there's still a selection to be made regarding species photographs. Any species photographs are very welcome. So do get in touch with Leslie about that. Uh, the large white is probably London's most elusive species. And the meadow brown is also surprisingly unphotogenic. So if you've got meadow brown looking beautiful, uh, particularly in an iconic London site, Brilliant, send it to us and it will probably make its way into the Atlas when that's published. Uh, habitat photographs are also welcome. Um, Leslie would like a good contrast um, of Great London's habitats and green spaces and iconic views. So we want to really make the London Atlas a London Atlas. And, yeah. Um, and the 2020 report is in preparation for the London Naturalist, but it's based on few transits only due to COVID restrictions. Hopefully, butterfly recorders will be able to get out and do more transects during 2021, and, and that'll still be to come in. Okay, all right. Next is Odonata, so dragonflies and damselflies from Neil Anderson. It's generally been qu a quiet season, a second poor season for migrant red vein data nationally, with just two records for LNHS, none last year um, in the area. Um, five lesser emperor records, two within inner London, and Norfolk hawkersing for the fourth consecutive season, suggesting that breeding is maybe occurring, but no exuvia found yet. So if anybody's got any records of Norfolk hawker exuvia, please do get in touch with Neil. Um, Willow emerald is now widespread through our area as well. Okay. Uh, spiders from Edward Milner. Edward loves throwing his scientific names at me as well when I, when I can't really pronounce them. Um, so really impressive, 158 species of spider were recorded during 2021 in the LNHS recording area. And that's actually 12 more than last year. Um, a new record for London is Pandava laminata, um, which is an exotic spider that was found in Ansel's Garden Centre in Harmonsworth by Gentiana Popovici and I did by Esmond Brown. A couple of other notable finds uh, are Epinsis Machilipes, uh, which is first recorded in London last year and is spreading rapidly. We had five new localities this year. And also the cardinal spider, Tegenaria Pariatina, which was found in North Enville by Polyvictorus. 
um, and that's a that's a more elusive relative of the um, house spiders. Right, and then I'm going to finish off uh, just with uh, a quick update from me before we go into the Treasury report after this. Um, and I just want to do some general updates about what's been going on with general recording and um, the iRecord activity. So we really properly started using iRecord last year. Uh, some of our recorders don't use it, so it, it's still good to send them directly to those where that's the case. But I, I can guarantee as chair, any records that go in through iRecord, I will make sure they get them at the end of the year. I'm really pleased to say that we had 2,804 records submitted during 2021, which brings a total for the activity up to 4,052 records, though some of them are outside of London uh, because some recorders have submitted their records from elsewhere. In total, there's been 743 species and we've had 63 recorders contribute to that. And I want to do a little bit of a shout out to our top 10 recorders. Now, because of the way that David Howden has submitted his records, he's in there twice. So he should actually, yeah, he should actually be a little bit more, but that would still have him in second place. Wendy Knight gets a massive shout out because she's been absolutely brilliant with 1,406 records submitted to the um, iRecord app. And Linda Pryke has also submitted just shy, not, not far off 500 records. So if you want a special mention in next year's AGM, get your records in. And um, yeah, we'll try and make this competitive to get even more records. Uh, I will do a bit more of an update about the breakdown of that in the society AGM in my little bit there. How do I 